All right, so let's take a look at some of these um, paper one questions now. So the time elapsed since the beginning of the universe. So let's just kind of do a couple of estimates. So um, an hour, so a minute is on the order of 10 squared seconds. It's about 60 seconds, right? Um, an hour is on the order of 1,000 because that's 30, 60, 60, 3,600 seconds. That's an hour. Um, a day is 24 times 3,600. Um, so we're going to add another zero. That's a 10 to the fourth hours. Um, so let's be clear. This is going to be way too small. And then um, here, you know, 10 to the 18th, that's like a... So that's 10 to the fourth hours in a day. And then there's 365 days in a year. So that's like 10 to the seventh. Um, so that's about um, 365 days. That's one year. And then we got a billion years. Um, um, you know, a universe is about tens of billions of years old. So we're talking about 10 to the 18th. If we take 10 to the 9th times 10 to the 7th, that's going to be about 10 to the 16th. Round up a couple we'll end up getting 10 to the 18th seconds uh, for the um, time lapse since the beginning of the universe. And then in an experiment to measure acceleration, um, free fall into the surface of the Earth, you notice we get these consistent results. So we actually have um, very inaccurate results, but they are very precise. Um, and then two balls drop from the top of the building, the distance between the balls, we get one after the other. The distance between the balls actually increases um, with time, not because of the mass. Um, it actually has to do um, with the fact that um, when you drop one after the other, um, this one, uh, th they're accelerating, which means um, they're gaining speed at the same rate, but one is always faster than the other and therefore gains more distance with time. Okay. Um, and then for number three, uh, the acceleration of the particle versus time. Acceleration is the slope, so the acceleration graph should just be a nice steady flat line like this. Let's see. All right. And then for number five, um, the um, forces acting on the aircraft vertically. Uh, we're going to have a wind force going this way and a weight force going down. And then um, this is uh, something for later. So it turns out work is the change in kinetic energy. And since we're moving at a constant speed, the work done is zero. I wouldn't put that on the test. And then um, if volume is measured in uh, millimeters and we want uh, meters cubed, that's going to be 10 to the negative 3 meters times 10 to the negative 3 um, meters. Uh, so that's going to end up being on the order of 5.2 times um, 10 to the negative eighth meters as we do that. All right, and then for number eight, I drew a line through these points, and if you notice, the errors are pretty small. Um, we get a nice slope. It looks like it's about 10 or 9 point, which is what you'd expect for a ratio of weight to mass. What you'd expect the slope to be as weight as mg. So this is, again, the same idea of having precise measurements that are not very accurate. So we do have that systematic error. So that's question number eight. And then for um, number nine, a skydiver jumps out of an airplane on reaching terminal speed. Uh, this is something we're going to do next unit. So this is practice. Um, but um, after she opens her parachute, um, she should continue to fall um, and reach a new terminal speed of less than 60. Um, so she's not going to hit the ground at 60 meters per second, nor is she going to go upward. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, she will not. This is what's going to end up happening is that she'll actually end up decelerating again. Now we have a graph of distance versus time to get the um, distance traveled by the object during the first four seconds. That's the area under the graph that's going to be one half base times height. It's going to be 1 half 4 times 20. That ends up being 4 times 10, which is 40 meters. And then here, um, we have a girl trying to lift a heavy suitcase. The weight is W. Um, we have this vertical pole P 
and this reaction force R. Um, so she doesn't quite do it, so um, she's not able to do it, which means the force is actually balanced. So weight is going to equal P plus R. And then um, basically, uh, this is a third law question. If we have a force plus F on A by B, then we're going to have a negative F on B because of A. And that's it for the uh, multiple choice portion of the test.